So a snapback, somebody said to me literally earlier today, man, the private markets are a mess. There is a slowdown that's happening, a slowdown in terms of the, the, the pace of you know, doing rounds and in terms of the, you know, the capital deployment, especially at the growth stage. It's been a slow start to the year in venture capital deals with bank defaults, still high inflation. Inflation, high gas prices, the war in Ukraine, it's all made VCs more cautious. Less institutional investors are giving money mm -hmm. to folks like me to invest. Um, things don't seem great, <laughs> I, I think is the headline number. And that's creating a, basically a slowdown throughout the ecosystem. Over the years, venture capital has been a critical force in driving innovation and business growth globally. Several well-known companies like Airbnb, Uber and others have benefited from the existence of venture capital. But in recent times, the atmosphere seems a bit gloomy. Is this the end of venture capital as we know it? Or is it just having a dramatic midlife crisis, contemplating its purpose in the fast-paced world of startups? Before we delve deeper, let's unravel the mystery of venture capitals. Whether you're a budding entrepreneur or just intrigued by the financial ballad of startup funding, this video is your backstage pass to the show. Venture capital, also known as VCs, at its core is a form of private equity investment provided to early stage and high potential startup companies. They pool funds from various sources with the goal of investing in startups that show the promise of high returns. The basic idea of the definition is that VC firms are made up of investors and these investors are looking to grow their investments, which the VC firms do by investing in innovative ventures for a significant return. Now, the basic idea here is that VC firms are essentially matchmakers with money. They invest in promising ventures and hope for a relationship that's both financially and emotionally rewarding. Because let's be honest, investing in a startup is a bit like a financial Tinder swipe. You're either getting a unicorn or a dud. VCs with their bags of money and wisdom swoop in to fund startups in their infancy. It's like being a fairy godparent, but for businesses. They provide seed stage finance to help founders nurture their ideas, build prototypes, and embark on that awkward first market research date. Venture capital isn't a millennial invention. It's been around since the 1980s when it was the cool entrepreneurial thing done by wealthy families like the Vanderbilts and Rockefellers. Back then, VCs were like the cool kids in the entrepreneurial playground, making risky investments in local businesses. Picture this. The Vanderbilts and Rockefellers were the OG venture capitalists, sprinkling money on local businesses like fairy godparents of capitalism. If only they had a wand that turned risky investments into golden opportunities, they'd be the true wizards of Wall Street. Fast forward to today, and VCs have evolved from being eccentric family projects to sophisticated institutions. In the 1980s, if you wanted to start a business, your financing options were as limited as the plot of a 1980s teen movie, personal savings, friends, family, or the not-so-reliable banks. The Vanderbilts and Rockefellers saw this funding gap and thought, hey, let's be the financial superheroes these local businesses need. Back in the 80s, starting a business was like trying to build a sandcastle with pocket change. Possible, but not too grand. The Vanderbilts and Rockefellers rode in on their financial horses to sprinkle startup dust and turn those small dreams into skyscrapers of success. Their investment strategy? They'd take a slice of the business in exchange for their financial fairy dust. This made them not just investors, but partners in the business journey. In addition to the money, they brought along a sack full of expertise, leadership, marketing skills, networking, and a sprinkle of technology, what we call the ultimate value add-ons. VCs aren't just in it for the fun, they're in it for the money. They make their fortunes when the companies they invest in grow and eventually make an exit. An exit can be as glamorous as an initial public offering, IPO, 
as heartwarming as selling to another VC or private equity firm or as straightforward as selling to another company. Unfortunately, not every startup gets a fairy tale exit. Some end up being the tragic tales of liquidation. Think of VCs as financial matchmakers who, instead of a happily ever after, seek a profitable exit strategy. It's like they're saying, we brought you to the ball, now go find your Prince Charming or Princess and make us proud. The venture capital market has blossomed since the 80s, with even more innovative firms and diverse types of VCs. While venture capital firms operate globally, the US seems to be the Silicon Valley of venture capitalism. In fact, Forbes' world's best venture capital investors list is like the Oscars of the VC world, and the 2023 edition reveals that 70% of the top 100 VC firms are US-based. China follows with 14, and the UK trails with 8. It's almost like the VC Olympics, with the US leading in gold medals. In the venture capital world, the US is like the Hollywood of startups, with its own version of red carpets and blockbuster deals. It's a place where unicorn dreams come true, and investors wear shades to shield themselves from the dazzling glow of billion-dollar valuations. Sequoia Capital, a heavyweight in the US VC scene, earned its spot on the 2023 Midas list by funding not one, not two, but eight deals. That's like winning eight golden statues at the VC Oscars. Sequoia, take a bow. You've just written a script for venture capital success. Now, you might know the basics of VCs, but did you know there are various types of venture capitals? It's like the Avengers of finance, each specializing in different superpowers to address the funding needs of diverse firms. We have philanthropic venture capitals fighting for social and environmental justice, government venture capitals playing superhero by combining government grants and venture capital, and corporate venture capitals playing Robin Hood by supporting innovative startups through large corporate funds. In the Finance Avengers, philanthropic VCs are like the superheroes fighting for a cause, saving the world one startup at a time. Meanwhile, government venture capitals are the financial diplomats, fostering job creation and economic development, and corporate venture capitals are the undercover agents, silently nurturing startups for the greater good of the corporate empire. Despite the grandeur of the VC ecosystem, there are differing views on the long-term impact of VCs on the businesses they invest in. Sure, there have been failed firms, but we've also witnessed the rise of unicorns, those magical, over $1 billion valued companies that make investors feel like they've discovered the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. For every startup that crashes and burns, there's a unicorn soaring to financial stardom. It's like a cosmic balance where the universe decides which startups get wings and which ones get a gentle push into the abyss. But here's the twist in the plot. Are we witnessing a market situation in the VC world akin to what we've seen in other assets? A bubble, perhaps. A bubble that's inflating like a financial balloon ready to burst? There is so much money held by VC firms, but fewer companies and business ideas to invest in. There's a term for this phenomenon, dry powder. With more than $500 billion of dry capital waiting to be deployed. No, it's not a term for the aftermath of a water fight. It refers to the amount of committed but unallocated capital that VC firms are sitting on like a stash of financial fireworks waiting for the right moment to ignite. Imagine the VC market as a financial party, and dry powder is the stash of confetti cannons waiting for the DJ to drop the beat. There's so much money, but fewer companies and business ideas to invest in. It's like trying to throw a party in a ghost town. According to PitchBook, up to 50% of deals go bad. Now that's a coin toss that even the most daring gamblers would hesitate to take. It's like playing Russian roulette with financial bullets, hoping you're not the one left holding the bag of losses. 
In the world of VC, it's not all rainbows and unicorns. Sometimes, it's a high-stakes poker game where half the players end up folding. It's like a roller coaster ride where the highs are exhilarating and the lows are stomach-churning, leaving you wondering if you're on a financial thrill ride or a horror show. Yes, there's a noticeable slowdown in the venture capital market, like a bear taking a nap in a cozy cave. But let's not forget the incredible success stories that venture capitals have orchestrated. It's like a roller coaster. Sometimes it slows down to let new riders on, but you know the twists and turns are coming. The VC market might be taking a breather, but it's not throwing in the towel just yet. Is this the time to revamp the playbook? Perhaps venture capitalists need a new set of strategies. Should they increase their cross-border activities, exploring new territories like financial pioneers? Venture into emerging markets? It's a grand strategy game where the stakes are high and the board is the global economy. The question is, are they the grandmasters orchestrating a flawless endgame or are they just hoping the opponent makes a crucial blunder? While 2024 might start slow for VCs, brace yourselves for some riveting activities from the second quarter onward. It's like the calm before the financial storm, where the real action kicks in after the opening credits. Will VCs unleash a blockbuster of investments, or will it be a slow-burning indie film with unexpected twists? Only time will tell. Think of 2024 as the opening scene of a financial thriller. The stage is set, the characters are in place, and the audience is eagerly awaiting the plot twists. Will it be a financial blockbuster, or will it leave us pondering the mysteries of venture capital in the dark corners of the financial universe? If you've gleaned some wisdom from this video, give it a like. It's like a virtual high five for your newfound financial insights. And hey, don't forget to subscribe for more content.